Hello and welcome to another video tutorial here on understanding body language. Liars, cheats and happy feet. I hope everyone's okay and having a good Friday. Um, so first of all, I've got to say a huge thank you to everyone who watched my previous video. Uh, I've had 100,000 views on that, which is uh, unbelievable considering how I've been doing these body language videos for a while. Uh, and my highest um, view count so far uh, on a particular video was 15,000, so I've just massively eclipsed that. Uh, which is great news. Uh, I appreciate all the comments about the, the work I do, um, so I'm very appreciative of that. So, what I've got for you now is the other segment to this interview that I covered uh, on Monday with Mariah Eater and this baby that Justin Bieber is alleged to have fathered. Um, so, what we're going to do today is we're just going to start the video at the beginning. I'm not going to play it through because I've not got enough time to play it through and then analyse it because I've got to get to work. Uh, but I'm going to play it and then I'm going to run through the bits that I think are significant uh, in this interview that we can dissect and analyse um, and maybe look at the reasons why she's uh, showing um, certain behavioural patterns. So what I'm going to do for you is going to press play and then we're going to watch and then we're going to analyse. So here we go. I want to show you what Justin said on the Today Show. About this situation. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. There's a pretty white hot spotlight, and you of found course. yourself under it recently. Yeah. Some headlines or someone has filed a paternity suit. Exactly. Saying you're the father of a three month old son. So what would you like to say about that? I'd just like to say basically that none of those allegations are true, and, and I know that. Okay, right, so, yeah. so what we've got there is this is the, the segment of an interview that I analysed with Justin Bieber on uh, Monday. Now I need to just clear up a little bit of confusion. Now then, I did his video first and I said that he was potentially showing the signs of concealed, um, concealed uh, information. But perhaps he's not um, telling... Uh, or the audience everything that he knows that's why he used distancing language and he made that contempt facial expression now then, what I'm saying is he's not lying <clears throat> about uh, having sex with Mariah Eater. I think he's lying about the fact that he says he's never met the woman um, I think when it all comes out with a DNA test and things like that it'll probably it'll probably come out that Justin did actually meet uh, Mariah uh, but not in an intimate setting I think these two have definitely met but, but I don't think Justin, there's no way Justin is the father based on his reactions um, to this particular interview. So that is um, what I, I meant when I said that uh, potentially both of these are not telling the truth. Um, so uh, just to clear that fact up, I do not think that Justin Bieber is the father at all. I do think they've met, but that's what Justin's denying. He said he's never met the woman, but I think he has. So anyway, but uh, we'll, we'll know the truth um, soon. So anyway, so let's continue this. Okay, rightio. So this particular expression here is a massive distress signal. It's where the hand comes right across the mouth to make a, a self adapter. Um, and then what we can see now is the head and eyes dip down. Um, so we don't want to make eye contact with what we're seeing that's uh, making us feel pain. But the whole thing just looks terribly acted and forced. Watch it again. When people show real distress and real hurt, they will not go through this particular movement here and then down. It looks very forced and very strange. Okay, and then the double comes into play there. Now, that is really interesting. Now then, normally when we feel a really strong emotion, often we'll just place one hand on the side of the mouth or the nose or the eyes to make a blocking technique. However, for something that's really punishing, we often use two hands. But she would know that. So by placing the double hand on there, it would appear that she's under extreme stress. However... After watching Bieber's emphatic denial. We can see with the eyes here, there's no tears coming down. So she, I think she's trying to make herself cry, but it's not coming off. Let's just watch that section back here. And this is called attempted behavioral control. 
Um, now this comes in when potentially we're falsifying information, but we need to let the, the receiver know how we're really feeling. But in fact, we're not feeling it because we're hiding the emotion. So what we're using here is the example of behavioral control. However, the actual physiological aspects of this would be to be crying, but she can't control that because it's often quite difficult to make yourself cry in, in, this, in this environment. So she's not crying there. Interesting. So we're seeing leaks coming through already. And here comes Justin. Okay, let's just... And his team is threatening with the two men eyes. What happened when Justin saw you? When he saw you, how was what was his reaction? When you two met eyes. Okay, now what's interesting there is the use of an eye block. As soon as Justin's name is mentioned, she presses her eyelids down and together quite hard. Watch it again. When you two met eyes. There we go. So the eyes press down very hard. It's an example of an eye block and it's when we don't like what we're hearing. Okay, and what there is, that could be a partial confession because that is not a difficult question. So listen to the question. Legal action against Yader. What happened when Justin saw it? When he saw it, how was, what was his reaction? So what was his reaction? When you two met eyes. Just to think. <laughs> so she's just about to say, I'm sorry. And then the hand goes down. Okay, and the uh, the tissue goes to the nose. So what's she sorry about? These are not difficult questions. These are easy questions. We just need easy answers to them. But she's finding it very difficult to create an answer here. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's a lot. Take your time. It's hard. Yeah, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> So I'm speechless. So we don't know if she's talking about what happened with Justin Bieber before, or now she, the whole thing is beginning, beginning to get too much for her, and she's realising that this has snowballed, escalated, out of control. Speechless. And now she's speechless because she's she's not thought about the impending punishments that are looming for lying like this, um, or uh, having sex with someone who's 16 because California law states that you've got to be 18. So we're looking at a statutory rape charge. So, and what we're getting here, we're just getting uh, a few sentences out of her. Now, this often comes with people who have something to hide. We don't like talking about it because um, if we keep talking about things that aren't true, uh, it makes people like myself and, and other body language guys pick up things. Things start becoming detectable and transparent. So she, that's why she's only given a few things away because in that case we don't we've not got that much to analyze. So that's why these short answers are coming in. Story of public doubts may be the least of her problems. Is there any concern because there has been some talk that the LMPD may launch an investigation into this case and say that because you were 19 and he was just 16 that you may be charged with a misdemeanor. Concerns about being prosecuted over having sex with a 16-year-old. Concerns, most definitely, yeah. We can see here with the furrowing of the brow that she is concerned about it. With a see eyebrows? Concerns. Come most down and together. Yeah. I mean, especially when. Especially when he came on to me. Now then, what's interesting there is the time it took to create the answer. That th that uh, um, information there, that sentence was not um, fluent. It was had pauses. And what's interesting to note here. Concerns, most definitely. Now then, yeah. watch this. I mean, especially when. Okay, now watch that. that that's a micro expression flash. I mean, especially when. There you go. Especially when. Contempt, so we've got muscles working in pairs again. We've got the zygomatic uh, major, and we've also got um, the buccinator muscle, which is controlling the action of contempt. So we can see it here on one side. Do some research on contempt on micro expressions. And again, so look at that particular facial expression. Note how internally there she'll have thought of created something in her mind. 
Okay, which is incriminating to Justin Bieber. What should I get? Especially Contempt. Pause, down, thought of something, eyes light up. Especially contempt again. Look at that. Where's that passage of play? So we go from contempt. Especially when... Eyes light up, she's thought of something. There you go, I've just thought of something, the eyes go this way. I know, I'll just say this. And then... Especially when he came on to me. And then the voice breaks. She tries to make that distressed micro-expression. Especially when he came on to me. Unfortunately for Yader, the age However, is... that whole thing there looks terrible. Because it doesn't look like she's, t she's recalling truthful information. Because she's flashing contempt. The eyes light up. They dart slightly to the left. I'm not a big believer in eyes going left, up, right, down. To access feelings and emotions and, uh, and noises and things like that. Disregard that. I think that passage of play there, that segment, that segment of the interview, is very, Unfortunately for Yader, the age of very interesting to know. Is not 16, it's 18. Will your attorneys handle that case also? If there is, if you are prosecuted. Of course, of course they, yeah. So of course, of course they. Oh, oh yeah. So she's not confident enough to give a uh, a confident delivery there. We see a speech error. Of course, of course so. Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm not actually sure now. Oh, goodness, I've not really thought about that. <clears throat> so here comes Justin. Okay, so let's just continue this. Getting myself into really, yeah, this is, this is a lot. After the court date, and just to take this DNA test, will it prove hands down that that is his baby? No questions about it. Now that is not a confident delivery. Know how she hides the lip there. Will it prove hands down that that? Okay, that's a lip bite. Or an example of pressing the lips down and together to try and hide them. Not a good sign. It's not a good indicator of confidence. No questions about it. I took this case. Okay, so we don't need to, to see this one. Right now to Justin. What message would you send to Justin? What would you say to him? Oh, I, I can't. I can't. Okay, so let's right start that question again. You could send a message right now to Justin. So the question is, if you could send a message now to Justin, what would it be? Okay, so the lips come down and press down and together. So the lip, the lip movement here, the lip behavior is significant. We press the lips down when we're trying to think about something or trying to create something. It helps us aid the brain. So the lips come down. And we're trying to think. Oh, I, I can't, I can't do this right now. I don't. Yeah, it's. I'm sweating. I'm. I'm very nervous. <laughs> I'm very nervous. So the eyes dart all around the room and she's very nervous. So the reason why that is, <clears throat> is because of the autonomic nervous system, which is a branch of the sympathetic nervous system. So there's two, there's two types, there's parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So the sympathetic nervous system raises everything internally in the body. Things we have no control on, that's why they're automatic. So like increases in heart rate, breathing rate, um, sweating, skin conduction, um, things like that, increases in blood pressure. So things we cannot alter and sympathetic arousal comes in with increased stress. And now there have been a lot of studies to show that increasing sympathetic arousal, what she's doing there, ner um, being nervous and sweaty, uh, comes in with falsifying information because obviously you've got heightened stress and things like that. So her stress levels are going through the roof. So internally her blood pressure and her heart rate are flying. So it's making it difficult for her to think of things on the spot. However, don't forget what we said about the truth, about what Mark Twain said. The good thing about the truth is you don't have to remember anything. It's all there in the mind and you can relay it back, forward, inside out, in any order. And it will be perfect because what you're recalling actually happened. However, also what's interesting to note is um, when she uh, walks off the set in a moment, um, it's very interesting to know that people, a lot of people do that to try and create answers while they're out there. However, did you know this? That when we uh, are often uh, are under cognitive load, which means we're trying to create something, our blinking rate will decrease because our brain needs to think about something and focus on it and then try and relay it as if it was true, try and get our nonverbal behaviors in the right pattern as well. 
So our blinking rate decreases. <clears throat> However, with sympathetic arousal, what she's feeling, her blinking rate will massively increase because blood pressure is going higher, heart rate's uh, a lot stronger. So the body is getting more blood, especially to the brain, to try and create some new information. So that goes, bypasses the eyes, and that's what makes them flutter. So don't believe that eye blinks and eye behavior uh, alone are indicative of anything because they, they cancel each other out. Sympathetic arousal means they'll blink more, but increased cognitive demand, i.e. thinking or creating information, means the blinking rate will go a lot less. So, don't forget that. Okay, so she's she can't think of anything to say, anything credible to say, and she's off. When Mariah returns, baby Tristan is being held just a few feet away. Okay, so there we go. So there's the baby in question. For a moment, it's a welcome, comforting distraction, but her mood shifts when I ask about what happened just before her alleged sexual encounter. Her claim that she and a group of girls first met Justin after the concert in a special VIP room that he picked her over the others. Could okay, now this bit is very, very significant, I think. Substantiate his story. Okay, so the hands come and place above the head. Okay, for me that looks like a massive gesture of shame. So she's ashamed now. Now, if I was conducting this interview, I might press for a confession here because we're seeing signs. Uh, of weakness coming out now with Mariah. We're seeing no signs of confidence. We can see she's in a terrible mess. I'd have, I'd have picked up on all these micro expressions. So I would have tried and get a confession out of her now because she's very vulnerable. And this cannot go on any further. And she knows this. <sighs> I know it's tough, but it is. Uh, I, yeah. I know it's yeah, tough, it but is. Could one of those girls substantiate this story? Is it was Could one I, of those give girls? me one minute. Okay. So let me pause it there. So the reason why this lady is really struggling on this question is because when people lie, they hate other people being involved. Because this lie is often about just this lady. She doesn't want to bring anybody else in there because she knows full well this, this information that she's relaying never happened. And if somebody else is brought into the equation, you'll have inconsistencies in the story. Because if you just created this out of thin air and not told anybody, then nobody else is going to know your story and that way the lie then will start becoming increasingly detectable with other evidence so she might not, might not longer be uh, be credible but somebody else might be and that's what she's afraid of so that's why she doesn't say yes or no because if she said if somebody else can verify your story all you've got to do then is just to go back to october last year find out who she went with there'll be records of people in the vip area and then just ask them but because potentially this never happened those people then will, will claim that she's a liar and she doesn't want that you see and that's why she's showing extreme stress here because she knows now that this is no longer about her her lies now can be detected by other people she can't give a credible answer and and Could she's, the eyes are darting. And then, give me one minute. The gestural retreat. And then that little gesture, there, I don't know if you can see that, is where the hands go to the back of the head. And now that is massive distress. It's like, oh, I can't believe it. We often show that particular expression at a football game. Um, when, when someone's just about to score, but he misses, the hand will go straight to the head in distress, in anguish. I can't believe it. However, she's showing anguish and distress walking off. So she can't think of a credible answer, A, because the story never happened. B, the, um, the interviewer is, is suggesting we will bring somebody else in there to verify the story, which she doesn't want, because potentially liars only fabricate the story for themselves. They don't think about other people, and other people can are, are used... Um, to help uh, spot the lie. So she's off. Now, tomorrow, and there you go. So that's a, a, an interesting end to that, uh, to that little segment. So it's interesting to note uh, that those who lie or are guilty, they must carry the knowledge of their lie, which makes it difficult for them to achieve comfort. So, Mariah Yeta here, if you spot all the, the, um, the non-verbal behavior we're seeing here, so Mariah is finding extremely difficult to achieve comfort throughout this interview. And that comes with harboring guilty knowledge or potentially lying. 
So we can clearly see the tension and the distress leaking out through Mariah. She's not comfortable to an easy question. In a special VIP room that he picked her over the others. So don't Other forget that attempting to disguise guilty or um, lying or, or any kind of knowledge that you're not talking about, any kind of concealed emotion, puts uh, a great uh, strain on the brain. Change the story. Massive strain on the brain. So increased cognitive load or increased cognitive processing. She's trying to think of something. So she's got a great strain on there. So she's, she's, she's struggling to fabricate answers to what are just simple questions. It's a very simple question. She's really struggling because of the guilty, potentially the guilty uh, knowledge that she's harboring. So tension and distress are leaking out. She cannot achieve comfort, which someone in this position, if she was confident in delivery, would be very confident and relaxed and comfortable. We're not seeing any of that. So she's struggling to fabricate answers to easy questions or simple questions. And that's why we see another gestural retreat. We see a shame here. And then she's off and the hands go to the back of the head. Watch how she gets up here. So the eyes dart. We've seen a lot of lip behavior again. She's like, oh my goodness. And she's off. So we're off to make another gestural retreat. The hands clasp the back of the head. And she's off. So there we go. Um, so there you go. So that's the second part of this video done on uh, Mariah Yeeta. <clears throat> Uh, again, she's seen, we're seeing more signs of stress come out through this video. Uh, we're seeing a lot of contempt, one-sided facial expressions coming in with the, the zygomatic major uh, and the buccinator muscle pressing that mouth wide when we feel smug. Interesting to know that Justin Bieber also made that particular facial expression, which is universal. Out of 10,000 facial expressions uh, our face can make, we've got 43 muscles of the face. Seven expressions are universal, meaning we'll make, we'll make them um, all over the world no matter where we are. Facial expressions of emotion are the closest thing we have got to a universal language. So please bear that in mind. So micro expressions such as contempt are universal, meaning everyone around the world, no matter about race, gender, gender, age, um, demographic value, any, anyone, anything like that, will all make those seven micro expressions, which are, which are covered in my other videos um, on my YouTube page. So there we go. So that's another video tutorial done here on understanding body language liars cheats and happy feet if you're interested in learning about more about body language then please check out my understanding body language page it's like liars cheats and happy feet uh, please click that video uh, please click that link i should say and to help support my page uh, and there you go so that's the other video taken care of here by uh, by maria again we're seeing signs of stress that come out um, what I try and do here on these videos is educate you on uh, the actual science behind body language. There are loads of myths associated with body language, like eyes going up, up and left, up and right, things like that. Disregard that because there's, there's been no research done on that particular theory. What I teach you is things that have actually had science and research um, validate uh, those kind of things. So everything like um, from work from like Joe Navarro, Paul Ekman, Albert Vridge, things like that. Things have actually been researched. I try and teach you about because I think it's important uh, that I clarify the, um, the the truth about body language and try and uh, get rid of some of the myths that people have. Um, so my intention here is to try and educate you on the actual science behind body language and not these ridiculous myths that have come in over the years. So there you go. So from everyone here, understanding body language, liars, cheats, and happy feet. I do hope you enjoyed that video tutorial. Uh, thank you for your comments about my accent. Yes, I am British. Uh, no, I am not James Bond. <laughs> so there you go. So everyone here at Body Language, take care and bye-bye for now.